In this video, let us learn to draw use case diagram. So for any topic that is given to you, you can easily draw the use case diagram. If you know the symbols and the basic rules. If you know the symbols and the basic rules, it is very easy to draw the use case diagram for any topic that is given to you. So first let us look into the components. Symbols is nothing but components. So let us look into the components. The first component is actor. So we will represent the actor in use case diagram like this. So this is the actor in a use case diagram. So this actor, it is not necessary that it should be only a real person. It can be some group of people or it can be some system. It can be anything. It is not necessary that it should be only a real person. It can be system or group of people also. So this is the first component. The second component is use case. Use case, we will be writing it inside ellipse. So this is an ellipse. Inside this, we'll be writing the use case. Now, for example, if you take some shopping. So in shopping, what are all necessary in online shopping? You have to order something. So you have to order the product. So order. So order can be called as in use case. So I have to write order inside ellipse. So order is in use case. And for online shopping, ordering alone is not what we do. We can also return back the goods if it is not satisfying. Now, for example, we have ordered some furniture in online and we have received that furniture and while looking at the furniture we feel a lot of the parts of that particular furniture is damaged so automatically we can return the product back so return can also be an use case and it should be written inside ellipse so these are the examples of use case Next, the third component is connector. So, connector means connecting the actor and the use case. So, it is just a line which has no arrow mark on either sides. So, I am going to connect. So, this is an actor. I am going to connect this actor with this use case using the connector i'm connecting i'm connecting the actor with the use case so for connecting the actor and the use case we are using something called as connector next one is generalization so if you take generalization the symbol for this is an arrow mark, one-sided arrow mark. So generalization means you want to divide the actor further. At that time, I have to use generalization. Now, if you take this actor, I want to divide this actor further. So I'm dividing it further. I'm dividing it further like this by putting generalization arrow. So now if I take uh, something like user, so if this actor is a user, then I can divide it further and write it as regular user, irregular user. So now we saw the online shopping example, right? That same example you can take over here also. Now, for example, this user is a person who is using that online shopping app. 
So regular users will be there. Irregular users will also be there. Both will be having the app. Both will be using the app. But there will be an user who regularly buys products using that app. And there will be an user who doesn't buy regularly. Who buys once in three months like that or once in six months. Whereas regular user will be buying some product regularly maybe weekly basis or some people for three day once like that so it depends so generalization means you are dividing the actor further if you're dividing the actor further then you have to use this symbol which is generalization symbol which is this arrow so this is the generalization symbol the last type of component is stereotype. Stereotype is nothing but relationship. So this will be represented by dotted arrow. So in relationship, you are having two things. One is include. You have to write like this and write include. Another one is extend. You have to put like this and write extend. Include is there, extend is there. So we should know what include is and what extend is. So include means it should necessarily happen. Now for example, you are having that online shopping as an example, right? We saw that as an example. So uh, in order to get into the app you have to log into the app only if you have logged in you can use the app so that login is necessary you have to log in in order to go inside the app and buy some product so you have to put include when it comes to logging login the app means include you have to use because it is very much necessary you have to log in in order to Use the app and buy some product. Whereas if you take something like feedback. Now after buying a product, you have to provide feedback for that product. That is your wish. So over there you will use extend. It is not necessary that compulsorily you have to give feedback for the product that you have bought. If you are interested to give the feedback on the product that you have buy, that you have bought, you can give. Otherwise, you can ignore the feedback message and move on. So extend is it is not compulsorily you have to do. Extend means you can do. If you wish, you can do. Otherwise, you need not do. Whereas include, it is not like that. It is necessary. You have to do in order to do something. In order to perform something, you have to do that step. Only if you do that, you can perform the rest. Whereas extend, it is not like that. So stereotype means relationship. The symbol for that is dotted arrows. In relationship, you have two things which is include and extend. So after drawing this dotted arrows, we'll be writing include like this. And we'll be writing extend like this. So if the use case what we are going to write is something that has to be compulsorily done. At that time below this arrow we'll write include. If the use case word which we have written it is not needed to be uh, done compulsorily. At that time we have to write extend below this dotted arrow. So these are the five components. So, if you know these five components, you are stronger to move with doing any use case diagram. And there are some rules which you need to keep in mind. These are the components. Once you know these symbols, it is easy to understand the rules. If you understand the rules too, for any topic that is given to you, you can easily draw a use case diagram. So, these are the components. We have finished learning about the components used in a use case diagram the next is the rules 
rules are very simple if you know the rules you can directly draw the use case diagram for any topic that is given to you so the first rule is you have to use relationship in your use case diagram you have to use relationship in a use case diagram means you have to use include and extend you have to use include and extend in your use case diagram we saw stereotype right we have to use this stereotype in the use case diagram that is one rule next rule is the use case should be small and it should look simple and neat now for example we saw online shopping so ordering some item so if you write order inside use case it is enough it is not necessary that you have to write order item inside use case this is wrong this is correct this is not needed you need not write so many words you need not write order item in a shopping app online shopping app if you write order it is very clear that you are ordering some item from the app so order is looking simple and nice this is looking little bigger and this is not needed also the next rule is at least you should have two actors in your use case diagram you are drawing actors right so at least two actors you should have like this you should have another actor in the use case diagram you can also have more than two actors but at least you should have two actors in your use case diagram next while having an actor you can divide the actor further by using generalization we saw here in generalization so it will be good if you use this generalization concept in your use case diagram so in your use case diagram if you use relationship then if you are using use case names which are shorter and looking neat and if you are using two actors or more than two actors and then if you are using generalization concept your use case diagram will look neat and it will look presentable for any topic and then the last rule is system boundary you should make at last system boundary is nothing but you have to draw a box now you will draw the actors and then you will use some connectors and you will have some use cases so all this you will be drawing here also some actors you will draw so like this you will be constructing a use case diagram so what is this system boundary that is a box system boundary is a box so you have to draw the box like this you have to leave the actors alone leave the actors alone you just have to leave the actors actors will be outside the boundary the rest of the diagram should be inside the boundary and you have to name this boundary with the topic now we saw the example as online shopping so this boundary i'm naming it as online shopping app so i have to write online shopping app as the name for this boundary so actors alone will lie outside the system boundary the rest will lie inside the system boundary system boundary is just a box and you have to name that system boundary with what you have drawn here here i have drawn for online shopping app so i am writing online shopping app inside the system boundary so these are the rules that you need to keep in mind if you are using all of this in your use case diagram definitely your use case diagram will look very pretty so these are the basic rules in the next video i'll explain how to draw an use case diagram with an example for online movie ticket booking if you like this video please like subscribe and share it with your friends thank you